On this very straightforward video, I'm gonna share with you how I set up my Sony A7S III for filmmaking. For those of you who are watching me for your first time, welcome, I'm Emilio and I post videos here on tutorials, filmmaking tips, gear reviews, tech reviews and so much more. So if you're into this kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also ring the notification bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. This video is all about how to set up your Sony a7S III for filmmaking and another video on how to set up your a7S III for photography is gonna come next to the channel. So let's go and start customizing this camera. The a7S III in front of us and without any further ado, let's go into the settings. So I'll click on the menu. We start with image quality. The whole project here is to create three different, as you can see here, one, two, three. I'm going to create three memory settings for the settings, the different settings that I'm going to use. Number one is going to be the normal 4K 25 frames per second. And we have 25 frames per second because I live in Europe, 25, not 24 for the PAL. The number two is going to be for the slow motion, 4K 100 frames per second. And the third one is going to be the all eye. Now, as you can see here, I select the XAVC-S 4K. This is not the all eye version, but it's the version that uh, more budget-friendly cards can handle this. When I say more budget-friendly cards, for example, the Pro Grade 256 gigabytes, 250 megabit per second. This is a budget-friendly card that I will have in the link in the description of this video down below. So I select this, then movie settings, 25, and I select the 10 bit. And on lens compensation, something very important. Here, the setting compensation, I set it to off. The reason of that is that I have noticed in Sony cameras, when this is turned on and you have a dark background, like a gray background or a black background, you see some rings, some purple rings that they're around. This is of the setting compensation. And I, as soon as I learned about that, I'm turning it off. Then on the media, this is for our memory card. File settings here, we can change the settings of the file. On the shooting mode now, this is a section where we're gonna need because here, if we go to camera set memory, we can save the different one, two, three memory slots that we're gonna use. Here we have the audio recording and um, I'm going here to see the different settings and how I'm going to use them, most of them. Image stabilization, zoom, and on shooting display, number 10. Thank you, Josh Yo, for this one. I set this to on. And basically what this does is that when you record, you see the whole square that it has the red line here. So let's start. Let's go and start customizing the buttons and tell you how I'm using the custom buttons and how I use the FN and the sections, the options on that. So we will go here for the video. This video is for filmmaking. I will have a different video that it will be for photography, custom key settings. And on number one, which is the wheel, I have set the ISO so I can change the ISO with the control wheel. On number two, I have the autofocus manual focus selector toggle. So when I click on that, I can change from manual focus to autofocus and vice versa. The AFN on that it has been changed on the A7S III. And also, if you see the video of Gerald Dunn, he's <laughs> the master guide for the A7S III. Um, he explains what the new features on the AF phone are on the A7S III. For number four, I have the white balance. Then the number five here, it's the custom three button. I have the display my menu. And basically on these new cameras, you have an extra menu that you can add some settings that you cannot add to the custom buttons or the FN button that you're gonna need on the go. And then on six, I have the D-Range Optimizer. And this is because Bradley Lee showed a setting that you can have the PP off on the standard profile with a zero nine on highlights, plus nine on shadows, and 
the D range, the dynamic range in auto. This gives you the more dynamic stops in your video without the need of uh, using the S Log 3. And I totally recommend you to check this out as well. As we move forwards here, when I click on that, I have the focus standard. When I click here, I can change the audio recording lever. Here, when I click on the left, I have the focus magnifier. From here, I can also control the ISO when I don't want to play with the wheel. And from here, I can change the transition speed because when you're normal shooting with a Sony, what I find very good is to have the transition speed very low. But then again, when, when I'm shooting in uh, super slow motion, I like to have the transition speed to responsive and a little bit faster so I can get all the different um, images that are coming into the slow motion. Here we have the movie recording and here on this custom button I change the focus mode and of course this is the custom button of the lens. Let's go now to the FN menu for video. So here I have set the marker display. Here I have changed the creative look so I can change from uh, the standard to the neutral that also Gerald done so and you know vice versa. From here I can change the focus area, the picture profile when I want to shoot in S log 3 for example. From here we have the zebra, the zebra level and then I have the picking display and here I have the autofocus oh, and here I have the autofocus scene sensitivity. So if I have it to the you know let me just see. I will show you that later on when and here I have the autofocus six sensitivity. I will show you all of these settings with the camera on. Right now I'm showing you the different menus so you can note it down if you want, if you like them. From here I have the face eye priority in autofocus. Here I have the steady sword, the assist gamma, and lastly the S and Q. Before going to the custom menu and see the settings, from here very important settings is the monitor brightness. If uh, you set that to sunny weather that means that it's going to be brighter, but of course it's going to have more battery consuming on this setting. And from here the display quality, if you change it to high again you get a better resolution so you can know, for example, when you're manual focusing to be exactly on the right focus. But again, the drawback here, more battery draining. Then very important, power setting, the auto power of temperature, set that to high, don't set it to standard and start saying, oh, the A7S III is overheated. <laughs> so if you set it to high, you forget about it. And basically that's it for now. Now let's go to the My menu, as you can see here. So on the My menu that I opened with the custom three button, as you saw before, on the first menu, I have the file format. So I can change for from the S to the 4K. Here I have the movie settings. So I can change the frames that I'm shooting. From here, I can change to APS-C shooting. This option in the A7S III, it's not like the A7 III because it has 12 megapixels. So you can use the APS-C mode only in 1080p. Here we have the Addy Flicker suit and it's not only when you want to not have flicker, but usually what the anti-flicker suit does, if uh, you see some videos that uh, the characters, your subjects are wearing um, shirts, that they have lines like black lines in a white shirt, then it's very useful as well. Then I have the aspect marker, as you can see here, and I can set the aspect marker when I'm changing from the FN that you saw before, where I want to be to 35, what aspect ratio I want the marker to have. Then I'm having the record media settings and that's very important because what I usually do is that here I have the Sony TOF card for the all eye setting and here I have for example the Lexmark or the ProGrade that I saw you before so I have a more budget friendly option and not necessarily the all eye feature especially when I'm creating videos for YouTube. And that's with the custom menu. Now as you can see here 
let's go into FN. Here I have the marker display that I can set it on and then again off. From here I can change the focus area. Usually the zone is one of the best areas to use. From here I have the picture profile, the zebra display that it's on or off, the zebra level. From here I can change that. And as you saw here, the sensitivity right now I have it on the default. And from here I go to my menu. Here I change to the white balance. Here I can change manual autofocus. Here I can have the D-range auto optimizer as you saw. ISO here, I change the ISO also with the wheel. Here I have the focus magnifier. Then continuous auto focus or manual focus. I can change the drive, the focus mode with this button here. And then as soon as I'm finished with the settings that I want to save, to save it to number one, I go to menu, shooting mode, and then camera set memory, enter to one, and it's registered. Same way, if I want to change the movie settings and get it to 100 frames per second in 10 bits, all the other settings are the same. I'm going again to menu, camera setting, two. And then again, movie settings. And to have the OLI file format, now we're going to SI for the all I. Movie settings, we have it to 50 frames per second, 10 bits, all I. And something different now, I can change the slot. Remember I told you, slot one is gonna be for the high end. If you like this video, you know what to do. All this great YouTube, amazing stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, if you want to add something to this video, I'm waiting you in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Emilio Takas, and I will see you in the next video.